Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking RO systems, and in today's video, we're gonna show you how to replace an RO faucet because we have an air gap failure. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers in the kitchen now, and again, we are going to replace our reverse osmosis faucet. Here is our main faucet, and there is our RO faucet. Come down below, and we've got our tank here, and unfortunately, it's not filling up, and we replaced a lot of parts on that little filter case, and no luck. Come to your water shutoff valve, and by turning it clockwise until it stops, that closes your valve. And this is the cold valve, as you see the blue right there, and a reverse osmosis fitting that feeds the water out of the fitting there and into the back portion of our case. What we'll do now is come up top and open up our faucet. Not much is going to come out. Listen to that. What we have found is our air gap has completely failed which is not good. Once that air gap fails, it's not going to fill up with water. Real quick, I placed a towel underneath the filter case because it is going to leak water when we remove these filters. We are going to do a full sanitation process for the entire system after we replace the faucet. However, again, no water coming out. It is still in the open position. I'm going to remove the top pre-filter. And I will set that in the sink. Next, remove the membrane. As you can see, it's leaking a bit. And finally, the bottom post filter. All right, DLRs, to the back of the filter case, and there are two lines that are going to be removed from this filter case, the red one and the blue one. And these are press fit designed fittings. And the way they work, as you can see right here, the blue line comes into a plastic fitting, and the plastic fitting actually feeds inside the filter case. And by pressing this in toward the back of the filter case and simultaneously pulling the blue hose outward, you will be able to disconnect this line. Be very careful and go slow. No need to rush this. Again, I'm going to push in and simultaneously pull out. As you can see here, we'll do the same thing for the red one. And sorry I got in the way, but there it is. Feeding away from the filter case and the third and final line that feeds all the way up to your faucet is your black drain line. And as you can see here, it goes into, yes, a press fit design fitting. Push in and pull out. And there might be a little bit of water leaking from this, but hopefully not. As you can see here, taking a step back and the next thing we are going to do is go all the way down underneath the faucet and unscrew the faucet. Down below DIYers and I'm going to do my best to maneuver my arm up and you can see this little part right here we are going to turn counterclockwise and loosen this all the way up until this actual locking nut falls. There we go. And make sure you get this little washer too. One last thing prior to going up top, feed that ring and locking nut all the way off of all three of the lines. Back up top and just be careful as you pull this up and out. There we go. That is removed. Here's the hole. And in the event that you want step-by-step -step guidance on how to cut a hole in granite countertop, definitely check out the link scrolling above. Here is our new faucet. There's the part number. Let's go ahead and open it. Here it is out of the packaging. And what we will do is remove the locking nut and washer. Next, direct your attention back to the hole. And prior to positioning this in place, make sure that your rubber seal and bottom base ring is in place. And we are going to feed all three of the lines through that hole. And the black line is very short, so you'll have to feed the red and blue in about three feet until you get to the black hose or line. And if it gets stuck, don't force it. Stop inserting it, go down below, and help feed the lines through the hole down below and around all the plumbing. And here's the black line. And right now there is some tension. I'll go down below and reroute my lines. down below you can see the red blue and the black drain hose right there now it's time to feed the ring and locking nut on the ring going first and make sure that you position this locking nut properly the two tabs will be sticking out closest to the floor and 
At this point, all three of my lines are through the ring and locking nut. We will continue feeding that up to the bottom portion of the faucet and align the thread properly without cross-threading it, and we will tighten that faucet in place. No easy way to do this, it seems, but it's pretty friendly. Just be patient, and again, do not cross-thread this. We'll go back up and position the faucet accordingly, come back down below, and tighten it in place. Back up top, and that is secured. Let's go back down below, reposition our filter case, and now we need to measure the lines and cut them accordingly. Filter case back in position, and as you can see, the red and blue lines are very long. And what I'm going to do, basically grab it from this portion here, and I want a constant downward slope with the lines. And what I'll do is reposition the camera and show you the cut. And I'm using this little tool right here. And this is perfect. Definitely check out the link down below in the comment section as well as the description section to purchase one of these. I'll start with the blue line. Again, I want a little bit of play. However, I don't want it sagging and looping in any way. So come in and best to cut long first and adjust as opposed to cutting too short and not being able to adjust. Check that out, a clean cut. And now the red line. Resecure the blue line and the red line just by inserting the lines in the press fit fitting and adding some friendly forward pressure to lock those lines in place in the press fit fittings. Now to your black drain line. This is a very important step. The last thing you want is this drain line feeding down from that faucet and going lower than the actual connection fitting and then feeding back upward to connect. That will interfere with the efficiency of your air gap and drain system, leading to all sorts of problems with your RO system. So what we'll do is pull this in place. It has to be a constant downward slant and make our cut. I made my cut and now it's time to insert the line in the press fit just like that. And as you can see, a constant downward slant. Taking a step back and from here, just double check everything. All your lines are properly inserted and secured in the press fit fittings and everything looks good from here. Here's our excess hose or lines. Let's go ahead and open up this and insert it into the base. At the very bottom portion of this, you will see two rubber O-rings and I like grabbing it right here, get a good grip on it, align it properly and evenly and straight and press down it and properly seat both of those rubber O-rings as shown here. Do your best not to bend this in any way as you apply that friendly force to properly set that portion of the faucet. Next on the back side of your handle, there's your handle, is a little plastic tab with a red arrow on it and you're going to carefully pull that out and that's going to start the clock for your battery and it is a six month clock, meaning it's a reminder every six months to replace your filters. And DIYers, that is it. What we'll do next is do the full sanitation process. That link is scrolling above in the event that you are curious and want to join us at that video. We'd love to see you. In addition, down below in the comment section as well as the description section are additional videos on troubleshooting reverse osmosis systems. Check them out. Thanks again for watching. From here, hey, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon, click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.